Right, uh, let's see now on how to transform the quadratic function. When you are to transform, you are changing its original. You are changing it, you are transforming it, you are making it to be something else. It will be no longer the one that it was before. So, when you are to transform, there are some processes of transforming. We transform through reflection and we also transform through shift. So we've got what we call the reflection. Translation. Translation. Right, uh, let's look on how to reflect a function. On how to reflect a function. Obvious, once you reflect something, there will be an image of that after reflection, right? Uh, let's take this function, the function of f. Uh, the function of f, uh, let's say we have x squared. We have x squared. It's y equals x squared. That's our Cartesian plane. This function has got the value of a, which is positive. Therefore, its turning point, obvious, it's here at the origin. It will be concave up. It's concave up. Since a is greater than zero, it's concave up. This is the function of f, right? And then, to reflect, let's say you've got a, a mirror there and a chair like that. Let's say this is a chair. If you are to reflect to this mirror here, the chair, the chair will come as like this. the chair will come as that. Let's say this is our Y, obvious, our Y, our Y. When you look here, let's say X1, X3. After reflection, after reflection, When you look here, x1 is now here, and x3 is there, according to this. x1 is here, x2 is there. The thing that will happen, after reflection, when you look, this is our vertical line. After reflecting on that uh, vertical line, the two points, x1 and x2, they are now on this side of the vertical line. In other words, their signs changes. Their signs changes. Let's look at Y. Y is still up there, and also here Y is still up there, which means when you are to reflect on a vertical line, Y won't be affected. When you are to reflect on a vertical line, Y will not be affected. Only X will be affected. Right. Now let's look at this one. The horizontal line. The horizontal line. That's our chain. That's our chain. Uh, X1, X2. Our chain there. If you are to reflect here, uh, 
this is our y, right? If you are to reflect here, yeah? this is still, when you look here, yeah? it's still x2. x2 is still on its position. It's still there on that point. And also x1 is still there. It is still on its position. Here, x1 and x2 have changed uh, their position, I mean their signs, they have changed their signs. Let's look here. This is a horizontal line. Let's write as the x-axis. Let's say this is the y-axis. So here, after reflection, looking at the position of y, y is no longer at the top when you look after reflection below the x-axis. y is now negative. It has changed its sign. In other words, the reflection about the y-axis affects the x value. The reflection about the y-axis affects the x value. In other words, if you are reflecting about the y-axis, multiply x by negative. If you are to reflect about the y-axis, you just have to multiply x by negative. If you are to reflect about a horizontal line or about the x-axis, about the x-axis, y will be affected. It's positive there, and then here it's negative. So if you are to reflect about the x-axis, y will be affected. You just multiply y by negative. And again, when you talk of uh, let's say this is our Cartesian plane x and y right? When we talk of x is equal to 4 x is equal to 4, that's positive 4, right? x is equal to 4 and you are you are to sketch this, x is equal to 4. To indicate this on a Cartesian plane, this is our x is equal to 4. x is equal to 4. x is equal to 4. That's how to indicate that x is equal to 4. In other words, x is equal to 4 is a vertical line. So if you are to reflect on this line, x is equal to 4. That means you are reflecting about the y-axis, x will be affected if you are to reflect on this line. x will be affected since this is a vertical line. But if you are to reflect, let's remove this. y is equal to 5 y is equal to 5 y is equal to 5 that's positive right y is equal to 5 so obvious to indicate this you are going to write it like that y is equal to 5 that's our line y is equal to 5 so when you say y is equal to something y is equal to that line will be horizontal x is equal to it's a vertical line it's a vertical line x is equal to it's a vertical line y is equal to that's a horizontal line right here if you are to reflect about line y is equal to 5 that means you are reflecting on the x axis because this is parallel to that it's a horizontal line so you are reflecting about the x exists if you are to reflect about this line, which is y is equal to 5. In other words, if you are to reflect about y is equal to 5, the value of y will be affected. You will have to multiply y by negative. 
All right, let's come back to this one. Let us reflect this graph about the x-axis. If you are to reflect this about the x-axis, in other words, you are, you are to multiply y by negative. So our y here is x squared. Our y is equal to x squared. So if you are to reflect this about the x-axis, this after reflection, let's say it forms uh, the function of g. We are to reflect f about the x-axis. Reflection of f. Reflection of f about the x-axis. About the x-axis. So, to form the function of G. To form the function of G. Right. We are to reflect this graph about the x axis to form the function of G. Remember, we said if you are to reflect about a horizontal line y will be affected. You have to multiply the value of y by negative. Our y here, our y here is given by f at x equals x squared. This is our y here. So if you are to reflect this about the x axis, you multiply the equation of y by negative, the whole equation by negative. This will give us the function of g. So g at x after reflection, this will be g at x equals negative x squared. g at x is equal to negative x squared. If you are to reflect about the x axis, y will be affected. You multiply the whole equation by negative. Right. So after reflection, this graph is concave up. But then after reflection, it will be looking like that. So whatever was there, whatever value here of y up there, after reflection, it will be down here. Let's see. After reflection. This is the image, which is G. After reflection, after reflection, this graph will be facing like that, which means our y now is negative. We've got negative y. It was concave up, but after reflection about x axis, it will be concave down. Right. Right, let's say we are having this function. K, the function of K. K at x is equal to x plus 2 minus 5. All sweat. Reflect K about the x exists. Reflect k about the x exists. A reflection here. It will be about the x exists. To form the function of h. To form the function of h. Which means h at x will be the reflection of k about the x exists. In other words, you multiply k by negative. h at x will be formed by multiplying this by negative because we are reflecting about the x axis.
Reflection about the X axis. Right. Let's see. H and X will be equal to negative. We are multiplying the whole equation. This is the equation of K. We are multiplying the whole equation by negative. It's X plus 2 all squared minus 5. Therefore, our image is negative times this. It will be negative into X plus 2 all squared. Negative times that it will be plus 5. As you can see, we do not say negative and then we go inside the bracket. No, we can't. This is one and the same. I mean, this is the same term here. It is treated as x squared here. It is treated as x squared. Just that there is now plus 2 within the bracket. So that's how it should be looking like. It's the reflection of k about the x axis. But if we were to reflect this about the y axis, reflection of k about the y axis. k is given by x plus 2 all squared minus 5. And then we are to reflect this to form G. To form G, which means G at X. G at X will be given by reflecting K about the Y axis. When you reflect about the Y axis, you reflect about the Y axis. We've got X here, we've got negative x which means if you are to reflect on that line we multiply the value of x by negative let's see here we are going to have negative x that's the image of that it will be negative x that's how it will be it's minus x plus 2 all squared minus 5. We just multiply x by negative. We multiply x by negative. And then our equation will be looking like that. Only x will be affected. This is the reflection of k about the y axis, about the vertical line. Right, let's see now on how to shift the graph. So let's use the same graph of F here. Translate F two units upward to form the function of G. Translate F two units upward to form the function of G. Let's see. Right, that's our Cartesian plane. Remember the graph of F supposed to be at the origin. Its turning point is at the origin. It's like this. That's the function of F. Now we are to translate it two units up. We are to shift this graph two units up. Let's see. We are shifting it two units up. 
from this point. Let's count. One, two. Each turning point now will be there, and then you sketch the curve. The shape doesn't change. You've just translated it, or you have just shifted it two units up to form the function of G. It is no longer F because it has been translated. It changes its name. It's, it's now called G. It's the function of G. You just shift it two units up. It's one, two, and then you draw the graph. Right. Let's see now on how to shift the quadratic function along x. This was shifted along y. Its equation now will be g at x. It's g at x. We are shifting it. In other words, to the value of y we add 2. So this will be x squared, which is our f. We are shifting f 2 units up, so we are adding 2 to y. This is our y. We add 2, it's 1, 2, so it's plus 2, like that. That's how to shift it vertically, vertically. Let's see now on how to shift it horizontally. Right. Uh, the standard form of it, now it will be looking like uh, h at x equals a into x minus p plus q. p, p, when you look at p, it's x minus p, x, that's our x. So we are moving along x, x minus p. That means this is this line, it's a horizontal line. Therefore, this is a horizontal shift. Horizontal shift. It's a horizontal shift. And then we've got q. It's y equals this plus something. We are adding something to our y. We are adding something. We are adding to y. This is our y. We are adding to our y. We are adding. Therefore, this is a horizontal line. We are adding. When you talk of y, y is a horizontal line. Therefore, q we are adding to a vertical, vertical line. This is a vertical shift. That's our vertical shift. P is the horizontal shift. Q is a vertical shift. Remember, these are the values of X and Y at the turning point. So we use those values to shift the curve. We use the values at the turning point to shift the curve. Right, let's say for instance you have g at x equals negative 2 into x plus 2 all squared minus 1 like that. We are to shift this graph two units downward. We are to shift G. Shift G. Two units down. Two units down. 
we are to shift two units down. Two units down. We are going downward. We are going downward. Two units down. When you go down, let's say you've got two here. You've got one like that. When you go down, it's two. Going down, you subtract. Going down, you subtract. Two minus one, zero, like that. Going down, you subtract. Same thing here. If you are to shift this graph two units down to form F, to form the function of F, to form F, this equation will now It's f at x equal to, we are to shift these two units down. We are shifting these two units down. Minus 2 into x plus 2 all squared. Minus 1. We are shifting it two units down, remember. Going down, we subtract. Therefore, it's minus. 2. Therefore, our f at x will be equal to minus 2 x plus 2 all squared minus 3. This graph has shifted 2 units down. We subtract 2 like that. Now let's see our horizontal shift. Like the function of g is to be shifted. The function of g is to be shifted two units to the left. Two units to the left. Right and g is given by negative x plus 2 all squared minus 1 or oh, it's concave down the coordinates you just solve x then x plus 2 equals 0 therefore x is equal to negative 2 in other words, the value of x here is minus 2, is 2, negative 1. That's our turning point. So we are to shift these two units left. We are to shift these two units left. When you are to shift to the left, you are moving from negative two, two units to the left. From negative two from negative two, you are moving two units to the left. That's one unit, two units. You are moving two units to the left. You are to write the new equation. If you are to shift these two units to the left, as you can see, when you are shifting these two units to the left, the value of x at the turning point will be now negative 4. Shifting two units to the left, it has to be negative 4 is to negative 1. After you have shifted these two units to the left, after shifting these two units to the left, it has to have negative 4. Here, let's look. Oh. After the shift, it will change its name. Let's say it's uh, the function of L. Right. Our new equation now will be x plus 
2. To have negative 4 here, we need to add it's plus 2, all squared minus 1. So if you are shifting to the left, you say plus. Shifting to the right, you subtract. It's minus. 2 plus 2 is 4, therefore it's x plus 4 all squared minus 1. That's the reason why we are having negative 4 is to negative 1. You shift two units to the left, you say plus. If we were to shift this graph two units to the right, let's see. Let's see. If we were to shift this graph two units to the right, from negative two, remember, Uh, let's change uh, the color here from negative 2, right? 1, 2. 2 units to the right. 1, 2. So when you look there, for you to have 0 here, you need to say plus 2. That's the reason why we are having 0. You need to add there. To find that. So let's see here. We want to have zero then. This is two units left. Two units left. Right? And then now we are to shift again, same function. This function. Two units right. Let's see the new one. It's minus into x plus two. Two units to the right. So we are to find zero because we are moving two units from negative two. It's one, two. Which means here you say minus two all squared. Minus 1. F at x will be equal to minus into this and that. It's 0, therefore we are going to have x squared now. It's x squared minus 1. We have shifted this graph 2 units to the right. 